Hi, uh, the other day we ran a couple of lens tests and uh, this is the result. First out is uh, the um, Engineer Optimo 25 to 250. A fantastic lens, as you can see, the color rendering and the sharpness is actually fantastic. This is a bulk lens, it's about 12 pounds and uh, it takes a lot of space it's a really um, hefty piece of, of uh, equipment but if you can cope with that this will deliver deliver fantastic fantastic pictures next out is uh, the cook cxx 16 to 40 zoom lens Cook quality and Cook uh, Organic S4 quality. It's a fantastic lens as well. As you can see, uh, look at the shards. They are uh, extremely sharp and the color rendering is also as good as the Archenier or even better in uh, some respects. The yellow, for instance, looks better to me. But that's uh, a detail. No barreling to talk of and uh, no breathing either. Fantastic. These two zoom lenses are fantastic. Next out is the first prime, which is a uh, Cook 5-I, which is uh, the interface that Cook developed to be able to speak to the camera and uh, inform it what the aperture and uh, how far away the object that you're filming is. And as you can see, this is also a razor sharp lens, a little bit cooler, a little bit lighter, a little bit clearer, and a little bit less organic than the other two that we saw earlier. And uh, But you can see also that the color and the yellow and everything is actually very, very good. It simply seems to have a little bit more of dynamic range. range. This is an all-in from Cook. The focus system, the color rendering, and the coating of, of uh, the gloss is all in. All they can do. Nothing is better. And it also has the dash, the slash eye interface to talk to the camera about what it is. The next one is the legacy lens that uh, a lot of people have been using to make uh, feature films. And that's the Cook S4i 35. Uh, all the lenses are 32 to 35 and the zooms we ran in 30, 32 millimeters length. And uh, as you can see here, this is a little bit more organic in the yellow. I, I tend to watch the yellow and see how the yellow works. And this is actually a little bit more to my taste. Less, a little bit, bit less scientific. This is the one I would choose if I only could choose one. And then last but not least is um, the body solution, which is the Cook Mini S4s. They are slightly, they are one stop slower compared to the, the S4s. They are 2.8. But uh, as you can see, they are they are working pretty fine. This is a 650 watt tungsten light that is lighting up our environment here, and as you can see, the the, the color rendering is excellent. But look look at the shot to the left; it's not sharp. And uh, maybe we we have set uh, the focus on the shot behind me and. Um, in the peripheral areas, it's not really as sharp as the other lenses were. This could be due to depth of field. We are now much, much closer to the, the, the largest aperture. So now we will have a couple of shots with a different view. Uh, we will use other calling charts here also so you can see how ordinary photo calling charts work with this. And you can also see Michael, our photographer, when he is holding the, this shot and we will run a couple of different examples here you can see that um, contrast is actually really nice in these lenses they are pretty small they're about two pounds while the, the s4 and the s5s are about 
50% uh, more heavy. Which could make a difference here and there. Handheld, for instance. I really recommend these mini s force. And now we are going to pull everything out of focus and then you might see that uh, the chart to the left becomes totally in focus at the, at the end of this shot. But look at how beautifully. Now, now I increased uh, the contrast a little bit in, in post. And uh, you can see that it is actually rendering this in a very beautiful way. What looks like vignetting on, on these pictures or these frames is not that. It's only the light that is uh, a little bit darker in the corners. So don't worry about that. But look now, very soon here you will see that the chart to the, in the peripheral is absolutely sharp. So it was a depth of field thing. Now you can see that I need to cut my hair. But this is still the Mini S4, 32mm. And uh, look at background. It's that is out of focus, and you see that it's a really nice step from focus to out of focus on this lens here. And uh, you can see that it's a little bit blown out, a little bit too much light. And I think Michael will decrease the aperture slightly, so we will get all the colors in the color chart. But you can see it's really white and really black and really gray. And sharp, really sharp. So there is nothing wrong with these lenses. They are just a little bit different. Now, in direct light, look at the yellow. Really nice. This valley, I like. And further, the small photo color chart every color is there nothing is blown out it's only me that's not there now I'm there and even in this dark uh, slightly darker environment the contrast is there and look at the autofocus areas the C stand in the, back, in the back for instance really good Slate. And now I have tried to accomplish a little bit more contrast, a little bit more black and a little bit more white. Let's see what happens to the color shot there. Mm -hmm. Looks good. And shadows are there. Nice. We don't have a lead light here, which I think is a pity because that now we have increased the contrast when we have direct light as well. And you can see it's slightly blown out and now the aperture is going to get other slightly and uh, it's now a less open lens. Also indirect light. More black, more white. And very soon you will see when we have increased the contrast slightly. No color correction, only contrast. Everything tries to be really black and really white. And there you go, but this is blown out. Crushed in the whites. Look at my skin on my cheeks and in my forehead. It works. This is correctable. And this dog, this is with red 300 and I think it renders color and con contrast and sharpness in a fantastic way. This is a underestimated lens. This is a fantastic lens. Thank you.